Charlie Parsons for the Purist Boxing today. I'm delighted to be joined on Zoom for the second time uh, with someone that I feel like I can say my friend now, uh, Mr. Stitch Duran, the greatest cup man uh, in boxing MMA. How are you, Stitch? I'm doing good, man. Just uh, getting ready to see some Bellator fights uh, in probably a couple hours. Uh, so, you know, I'm always watching combat and, uh, and I love it, but uh, I'm doing good. You know, we're, I'm starting to do a little bit of traveling now. Uh, you know, I've got my both vaccines and I'm starting to do, I've done three shows on the road. Uh, so it uh, looks like we're slowly but surely uh, getting back to normal uh, here in the United States. I know uh, here in Las Vegas, June the 1st, everything is going to be open uh, 100%. So it's good to be in that position and, uh, and say that uh, we're beating this COVID, but everybody should uh, definitely take their own uh, responsibilities and take their own vaccines. Of course. Um, one thing that we sort of spoke about, it was before um, the exhibition fight, which was something that I sort of wanted to get your view on. I know that you worked on the fight between, well, I think you were on the undercard of the, working with one of the fighters on the Jake Paul Ben Askren card. Um, what was that experience like? Yeah, actually, I, I worked with Ben Askren. Not much. Oh, okay. I mean, I was, in, I was in the corner with him for, I think, like a minute and 28 <laughs> seconds. You know, uh, but but it was cool because uh, Triller brought me and uh, Paul Querido uh, and Mike Basil. Uh, Mike Basil and I worked together in the top ranked shows as cut men because of this COVID. They they bring us in uh, in case these other teams can't bring a full team with them, and a lot of times they can't. And Paul Querido is the other cut man that we worked the Triller show. He's the one that uh, was the cut man for Ivan Drago's son Victor in the movie Cree Two. So we're all qualified, and I brought them in to take care of it. But, you know, like Top Rank and, and the Triller Show is whoever needed our attention wrapping their hands or working their corners, we were there for them. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I worked at Ben. At least I was in Ben's corner. Uh, but there wasn't up much I could do outside of telling them that uh, the referee stopped the fight for the right reasons. Um, in being involved with that fight, obviously it was it was one that was – very high profile and there were almost question marks around it. I spoke to you about it. I said that I'd seen footage of Ben Askren's stand-up game uh, and, and it was certainly a bit questionable. It definitely did prove that on the night. Um, afterwards, someone posed a question to him and they said, uh, do you think the stick that you're getting um, for being beaten by Jake Paul is unfair? Sort of, you know, playing quite a sympathetic card to Ben and Ben said, no, I just got knocked out by a YouTuber. I deserve it. Um, in defeat, was he quite accepting of it? Well, I, you know, I didn't speak to him after the fight. You know, I spent 13 hours there from the time we got there till that last fight. And, and I, know, I normally don't stay around for the media. You know, I've seen okay. too many of these fights. I'd rather go after 13 hours, rather go to my room and, and get something to eat and, you know, and go to sleep. But I don't know. But, yeah, it was, it was that type of situation. You know, Jake Paul and Logan Paul are masters at what they did. And what they're doing, you know, uh, of course, you know, I worked with KSI and I worked with Anson Gibb when he fought the brothers. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, Ben Aspirin, uh, but they're doing the right thing. You know, they're fighting guys that are out of their element and fairness to Jake Paul. He's an athlete, you know, just like Michael B. Jordan and Creed, you know, he's an actor, but he turned out to be a good athlete and, and do the proper techniques. So I think he has that advantage over him, but, you know, Logan Paul fighting someone like Floyd Mayweather, that's entirely, entirely a different script. Uh, but I think, you know, on the marketing side of it, and that's all this is, is marketing 101, uh, for uh, Jake Paul to get Floyd's cap and, you know, run away with it, that brought up millions and millions and millions of new viewers, and uh, what a way to go. You know, so, hey, man, you know, you could hate them. Uh, at the end of the day, 10 years from now, when they're multi-multi-millionaires, they're not going to care. Mm. You know, so they right thing at the right time and uh i'm just glad to be part of them you know for me they're fun when i did the thriller i did one of the earlier shots 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 or uh, fights that's why i was there 13 hours uh it was a couple one blood and one crip uh gonzo and and bosco that uh snoop dog put together to do an exhibition because their new program is is gloves up and guns down so so i worked with them you know, and got to know them and, uh, and understand that, you know, they're, they're trailers trying to do the right things. Uh, and and uh, the concerts with Justin Bieber and Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube and all that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm of the older generation, but I got to see it firsthand and 
uh, Justin Bieber really kind of blew our mind, and this guy is is definitely everything people say he is. He was tremendous. I've got to ask you about something that you mentioned. I didn't write it down, and it's something that you brought up. And as I was sort of asking you about the Jake Ben thing, it came to mind. Uh, I have to be sort of very impartial uh, in media, and I imagine it's the same for you. And anyone that sort of works in the industry can't really give too strong of an opinion because you never know you might be speaking to that person or working with them in the future. <laughs> hey, you can learn it quick, bro. Go ahead. I am. I am. Um, However, with that being said, uh, yesterday I did put out a tweet, uh, fairly strongly worded, I'll say, after seeing the Jake Paul uh, and Mayweather uh, altercation, if you'd call it. And I said, yeah, I can't effing stand Jake Paul. I don't mind Logan, but Jake moving like that to Floyd, taking his brother's limelight and making it all about him as per. Um, that's something that, and if you choose to sort of take the fifth on this one, you're more than welcome to do. Um, but I tell you what, I really, I don't really like the whole YouTube thing, but it brings eyes to the sport and it generates money. So I respect it. And if someone gave me the opportunity to interview these guys, then of course I would take it. And a lot of them I grew up watching. However, I feel with the Jake Paul thing, it was a little bit where I sort of, I was like, okay, so this is the, this is the line. I, I thought Floyd Mayweather, Logan Paul, I thought it was funny. I thought the fact that they were doing it was funny. I feel like Jake is almost stealing his brother's limelight. I mean, that was meant to be the Logan Paul show. Jake had the Jake Paul show uh, with Ben Askren. I don't remember seeing Logan get involved with any of that, really. And yesterday, you see him going up to what we see as, you know, one of the greatest fighters of all time taking his cap off like that which and people was I, I saw an interview with Floyd afterwards and they said oh was it an important cap and I think I, I think it was a sort of jokey reporter because Floyd was sort of laughing with them but that's not it it's more about the ego and the pride in Jake doing that and sort of stealing Logan's limelight and making it about him which he so often seems to do uh, what what do you make of that well you know it's funny and and it, let me kind of school you for future ask those questions you know i think you as a journalist you know uh you want to get down to the truth so mm. ask that but in your response to what your response was is jake paul did everything that he was supposed to do brother he got you guys talking about it mm. and and logan paul's gonna have his time you know that time comes uh but i tell you what that was a big shot in the arm for boosting up that type of fight because in all fairness who wants to see Logan Paul that's 0-1 against Floyd Mayweather that's 50 and 0? Mm. It, it just doesn't make sense. That's like me and you going into a fight. You know, we're in different positions, but you're making a lot of money. So what Jake Paul did, he got your juices going, and he got probably millions of other people juices going. And I know because I was looking at the, the the Las Vegas news, the local news, and they brought that that segment up. So uh, when it comes to marketing one-on-one, and that's what these guys are specializing in, uh, Charlie, they did what they had to do, man. So now, cause, you know, before I, I, I could have cared less, even though I'm working that, I'm not working that fight. I'm working with um, Badu Jack. Is, that's a real boxing. Badu Jack is yeah, yeah, fighting, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, the semi-main. But uh, he brought attention and, you know, The Zone and Triller and all these guys that do pay-per-views they base it on numbers and and you'll probably watch it you say you know the jake paul or logan paul and mayweather fight uh because of all this interest so he did what he had to do bless his heart can't hate the guy for that but no. i understand that he looks like an asshole you know that that i'm not going to take away from it but i've run into so many fighters that have that same position so i i know <laughs> i know more i know that it's a i know that it's a numbers game and all of this and all of that and and Look, there's not so much people uh, wanting to watch the fight because they don't know the outcome. I suppose you've got kids of the age, you know, that watch Logan Paul that maybe, you know, I see the odd tweet online and it's like, oh my God, what if Logan Paul wins? And I, I, I don't bite, you know, you know, those ones where you don't even just give a reaction. You're like, oh, um, but do you not think now that in Jake doing this, people are going to be like, Oh, I kind of want to watch um, Jake against Mayweather and, and not and not Floyd. Um, sorry, and not um, Logan. Nah, nah. You know, Jake Paul. He he did what he had to do. You know, and and I don't think he'll see it. But I thought it was ingenious on a marketing aspect because that's what I base I base everything on marketing one on one. 
Mm. And when it came to market, that was the cheapest. Actually, it was a free piece of advertisement that went worldwide. And, you know, you got to kind of peel that outside layer of the onion off to see the actual figures. And trust me, the promoters were probably laughing and saying, yes, we did it. We did it. Uh, yeah. You know, Jake Paul's no dummy. You know, Not he might be. All the way this. to the bank. Yeah, all the way to the bank, bro. Yeah. Right, moving on to uh, the proper boxing, the stuff that I, I enjoy to talk about, the stuff that I enjoy to watch, the stuff yeah. that I stay up 5 a.m. to talk about. Um, we know that sort of Tyson has flown out um, to Texas to support Billy Joseph <laughs> fighting tomorrow. Uh, but I've seen, I think it was a week ago today, a video of yourself, uh, Sugar Hill, Tyson, and, and you're, uh, you're, you're playing the air guitar, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Great video, I have to say, Stitch. Sort of first things first. How did that? How did that happen? I know what Tyson's like. Did he just sort of tell you to sort of start dancing and you did it? Or yeah, you know, Tyson Fury. It's 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 fun working with him. You know, and, and like I say at this point, Charlie, I've done so many world title fights that those aren't even important to me. It's the characters that I work with, and Tyson Fury is a character, bro. Number one, he trains hard. He definitely he's diligent in what he does, and he's out there to win, and he's gonna win, right? But you outside of that he's just a happy go lucky guy and so what happens he loves rock and roll he loves music and he's singing songs as he's getting his hands wrapped he's singing songs as he's shadow boxing and on this one after working out he started to jump around and singing to that song and i'm sitting in the in the corner over there on one of the benches Stitch, come on up you know that shit so i did a little bit of carlos santana <laughs> and but it was funny because we're filming it in the top rank publicists uh, are filming it and yeah. i said man don't put this out please don't put this out next thing i know we're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of 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 hits but that's the kind of guy that tyson fury is and and you know and i applaud him because like I say you peel away that out, outer layer you wh wh what he's doing is he's creating because we were it was me sugar hill jorge capetillo and of course tyson fury we're the team right we're the team that gets in there and works the corner He's bonding us together, bro. As you look at what happens, he bonds us together and, and makes us one. And uh, so, you know, I always look more on what the actual picture, I, I look as to why it's being designed. But on this situation, uh, it was just an impulse. <laughs> it happened, but it happened for a good reason. When will we see yourself stitched around in one of those Versace robes that uh, Sugar Hill and Tyson Fury like to wear? Yeah, you know what? The name Versace is cool, but uh, I'm happy without without a robe, bro. You know, uh, and you know, not only do they have Versace robes, but they also have the Versace shoes. Okay. You know, and I don't know how much those cost each, but I know it's a handsome penny. You know, uh, yeah. If, he, if 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 Tyson was to give me a Versace uh, robe, uh, I'd probably wear it only at home. You know, and like like me doing this this, I, I'm usually more on the quieter side on that. I'm 69 years old, bro. You know, who's there jamming with, you know, someone with a rocker, you know, like Tyson Fury. But but in that situation, it was fun. I have to say, from the sort of stuff I've seen, uh, I think the last time I spoke to you, I spoke about um, the sort of, we get two, the media get two sides of Tyson. We've got the side that sort of loves it, like we saw last week, where yourself uh, was pulled into the video. And we've got the side of Tyson that, uh, you know, Sometimes he'll be posed a question and he'll, you know, he'll say something like no comment or uh, he won't give much away. It's almost like we can sort of determine his mood because the last time I spoke to you, it was the uh, Tyson almost seemed, uh, you know, slightly down, say. But at the minute, he seems really, really in good spirits. Is that the sort of vibe you're getting off him? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, and, and uh, yeah, you know, you depend on what kind of, when, when he's walking in, he has his phone, he's talking to people. Hey, he even called the, uh, Billy Joe Saunders. And, uh, hey, Billy, listen, listen, I got stitched right here. Best cut man in the business, man. If you need a cut man, you know, let him know. You know, that type of thing. He's just very outgoing. But, yeah, it's, you know, uh, you kind of learn to read fighters as you work with them. And that's so important because come fight time, uh, you have to understand the, the mental mentality that goes with, with being a fighter. I saw something from Tyson the other day saying that he sort of he doesn't get nervous before fights, and every every fighter uh, sort of admits the nerves that they get before the fight. But Fury sort of is that character where you almost believe that. 
Um, you know, he he's he always you know says everything happens for a reason. It's down to God. That sort of narrative. And when you see him, you almost think, Christ, this guy isn't nervous. Does does he? You know, when you've seen him before a fight like you did in the uh, in the Wilder rematch, did you get nervous vibes from him, or did you just think this guy is a hundred percent confident? Yeah, it was a, a normal day in the office for him. You know, just. You know, messing around, joking around, getting his hands wrapped, sitting with his wife, hugging her, and you know that was that was him. And 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 I believe what he says. You know that uh, he's, you know, it's two guys because he was talking about. They asked him about uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo, and how do you see that fight? And what do you tell Billy Joe Saunders? And he says, "Hey, man, you just you're two guys. Forget the press, forget the fans, forget all that. In the ring, it's just both you guys that have skills." And and you go and you you take that approach it, that way. Now, lastly, on Tyson, we don't have an official date uh, for the Joshua and Fury fight, or Fury Joshua, whoever's name you want to put first, because I know that is uh, is something that people are discussing a little bit. Um, <laughs> we know when it's going to happen, but Eddie Hearn today has teased uh, that it will be made official in the coming days, and that there are lawyers ironing out the last amount of details. Um, from being in camp with him, is there anything that he might have suggested, you know, or is sort of his his aura around him maybe thinking, okay, this mega fight is finally sort of happening? I mean, a, a couple of weeks ago, Aram said, look, this fight's not happening, uh, which everyone was sort of question marks all up in the air. Eddie obviously came back with a response. There was a clip of um, Tyson two days ago where he met Eddie um, at the Billy Joe sort of, I imagine, media day or something like that. And he shook hands and some one of the cameras picked up Tyson saying, you finally made it happen, Mush, uh, something along those lines. Is, yeah. Do you get the sort of feeling from being around him? Obviously, you know, there's no fooling anyone. They're there, they're training for Joshua. Do you get the sort of vibe that it's something that's nearly there? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I sure hope so, you know, because the sooner we get a date, the more you can come down. But, you know, in, in all fairness, in, in the camp that I've seen the week that I was there with, with Tyson Fury here, his main goal, I mean, outside of working out, you know, he's working out and he just, he's not really doing the workouts set to go for a world title fight yeah. with Joshua. He's more of just breaking sweat, having fun. But the comments that I heard more than anything, Charlie, is he's there to support Billy Joe Saunders. Really, that's his, that was his whole thing. Is uh, and that's the way I took it, and that's why I like, say he got him on the phone and you know and all that. But yeah, the the fight. I think you know he said it's going to happen. It's going to happen whenever it happens. You know. But right now, I continue doing what I do, and that's training every day. So uh, yeah, I think he definitely has his head on straight, man. It's kind of surprisingly, you know, when I first uh, when he fought uh, Vladimir Klitschko, I, I looked at him entirely different. But I look at him entirely different now because, you know, sometimes uh, uh, what you see is not the truth, like you said. And uh, but he is definitely focused on on being the best fighter ever. I'm six nine and a half, and I hit hard, and I'm the you know. And he he's absolutely right. <laughs> so you can't you cannot misjudge him for that. Just quickly before um, sort of we go into some of your stories, which is something that I really wanted to focus on. Um, I've seen that Josh Taylor and Tyson Fury uh, were together for a little while. I know Ben Davison's out there training because Josh Taylor's got his fight with Ramirez coming up. Um, were you there with Josh Taylor at all when Ty with Tyson? Did you see much of Josh? Or was it yeah, I spoke to him, spoke to Ben, spoke to the whole team. And, you know, that's one of the fun things that we do when you're in the gym. It's 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 barbershop talk mm. you know you go and you just go and shoot the shit and all that but uh yeah and i'll give you breaking news all right since uh you are the young one that's up and coming uh ben davidson contacted me yesterday and and uh and asked if i'd work the corner with josh taylor and oh wow uh, i said i'd be more yeah so you you heard it straight from me bro uh and nobody else knows but you and i right and ben davidson well no let me explain i'll go a little deeper uh, on on how that goes because uh, when I was there, you know, I'm, I'm watching, I met, met the whole team. And then Ben is wrapping uh, Josh's hands. And, and he said, well, what do you think, Stitch? How's it look? You know, so I you know, applauded him. He's doing a good job. And, and, you know, we're talking and all that. And, you know, I asked him who's, uh, you know, who is going to be his cut man. And he said, well, I think they're bringing somebody in from the UK. I said, well, just so that you know, Top Rank brings us in as the house cut man 
for events where guys cannot uh, bring their own cut man. So, you know, if, if you're interested, you know, that platform is available to you. And, and uh, so, yeah, right, you know, cool. So, yeah, he called me, contacted me yesterday and asked if I could work with him. And I said, yeah, sure enough. So going into plan B, uh, uh, well, the other side of that is Brad Jacobs, the CEO of uh, Top Rank, called me. And he never calls me, right? Uh, he, everything we do is through email and, and text and all that. Uh, but he says that uh, uh, Ramirez, if I was going to be working the corner with Ramirez, because uh, he had heard that uh, I was going to be with Josh Taylor and I had worked with Ramirez before. And that's what the manager had, had asked, right? And I said, I don't, I've never worked with Ramirez. So I know we're both Mexicans. We both grew up in the San Joaquin Valley as, as farm workers, but I've never worked with him. I said, Robert Garcia, the trainer, usually uses Mike Basil in the bubble uh, when we're working, you know? So he called back and said, yeah, I spoke to the manager and, and uh, you were right. You know, it, uh, he thought that you were working with him. So it was kind of nice to get both sides of it, but uh, I'm going to be locked in with, uh, with Josh. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, you got the scoop on that, bro. <laughs> I have to say, I'm gassed that we got the ex exclusive. That's something that I'm going to put straight up on my socials. Uh, that's a fight that's happening on my 18th birthday weekend. What's the date of the fight? Is it the 22nd? I don't know. I think uh, it's the 22nd. I, I, and I, I, think, I think it is. the uh, No, is it the... No, hell, I don't know when it is. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, it's the 22nd of May. That's my next show. Because I have all June booked also. So okay. the 20, 20, hey, happy birthday. Uh, I'll make sure I'll take care of Josh like uh, like he's my son. Okay. You know, and that's, that's what I'm able. I will be watching that on my birthday. I imagine I'll be out. It'll be a late fight. So I'll come back to the hotel uh, celebrating and I'll make sure and I'll be like, that's my man Stitch in the corner. I, I heard it from him first, first. And you're right. I haven't spoken to him. I think well, my, my wife knows, you know. and uh, But outside of just her and I, uh, I just broke that news to you. So, uh, uh, you know, and it's funny because I was, I always say that working the, the bubble with top rank, usually I, I don't work with a lot of Latin fighters. They're smaller in weight. I work with a lot of like the middleweights on up, the heavyweights and all that. Work a lot of Eastern Europeans, uh, uh, Europeans, uh, you know, uh, some Asians, but very few Latin. And, uh, and sure, it's a situation that's like this. I'm working with another Brit, you know, and uh, which is fine with me because to me it's not, about who you are, what you are. It's, whoever I'm working with, I'm gonna give you 150%. And like in MMA, there's, there's multiple, multiple, multiple times where I'm wrapping your hand and your opponent's hand and I end up working with your opponent, you know? Mm -hmm. But there, I'm there to give you every possible protection that, that, you're, uh, that, that you should have. So, you know, I'm, I'm neutral, but I, I do like victories, no doubt about it. Of course, who doesn't? Yeah. Um, now, like I said, you know, we can debate the current landscape of boxing, you know, I could, anyone can do that. But something that um, specifically you said to me the last time uh, we did an interview, you said, look, not being big headed, but me, myself, I've got more stories than sort of anyone in the sport. I've, you know, you've been you've had a long, long career. Um, you've seen everything. I mean, the names that you've worked with says that all. So rather than me now sort of sticking to the script and, you know, asking you all the all the questions that get the headlines and all of that, uh, something on a personal level that I would like to hear, you know, one on one, no better experience for me. Um, sort of some of your most memorable moments. And then I can sort of go from there and ask you to expand on those points rather than because. So many fights that you've been in, I wouldn't know where to start online. So I want maybe maybe you to speak through with me some of those memorable moments. And like you said to me, it's not something that, um, you know, you're going to be able to sort of say, oh, Charlie, I can do this with you every month, for example. But it's something that if and when we do an interview, we can sort of speak about these moments that you've had in the sport. And I had really great um, feedback on the on the last thing we did we uploaded it as a podcast on spotify and my guys at the purist they said to me charlie ratings on this really really good and i had lots of my friends who um even sort of casuals for example they'll, they'll see a lot of my work and they'll be you know they won't know who it is but they saw yours and i, I was i was at my friend's house and i was speaking about you i was speaking at the fact that i got to speak to you and they love the stories yeah. uh, so that is something that memorable stories hit me and then we'll sort of speak through some of those yeah there's i mean god i have you know if you want boxing you want mma if you want the movies 
Uh, I have stories, man, that nobody has. And, Anything. Uh, all right, all right. Well, let's uh, well, let's go with um, Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, you know, uh, when he fought Anthony Joshua, Wembley Stadium. You know, I don't know if I mentioned this on the last interview, but I didn't see Vladimir to the weigh-ins because yeah, 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 in Crete, right? So that's when I tell him, I said, look, don't worry about nothing. Tomorrow I'll take care of you like you're my son. Come fight time, he, I'm putting the Vaseline, and he looks at me and says, you could call me son. So I knew I got into his head, right? Those, those are very, very special moments. I just did an interview yesterday with uh, a, a former UFC fighter, Houston Alexander, and he understands the questions that he asked me because he's been there. Yeah. And, and I tell him that, uh, you know, the moments that we have one-on-one -on -one are, are very, very special. You know, uh, Michael B. Jordan in, in Creed One. Uh, every day I'm wrapping his hands, uh, just him and I. So I get to talk to him and all that. And about the fifth week, I, I did. I was a little bit of the British guy in me. I said, you know, Michael, I'm, I'm very proud of you doing what you're doing and how you're doing it because you're making us uh, proud in our sport. You're coming into our sport and making us proud. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knight you as a fighter. So now you are a fighter, right? And, and those are moments, you know. Uh, so, I mean, Vandalay Silva, you know, fighting Chuck Liddell when one of the toughest, toughest fights I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, I saw Chuck Liddell at the trailer, and I brought that fight up, and he says, yes, one of my hardest, hardest fights. You know, uh, Vandalay Silva, after he's cleaned up, he comes and tells me in the middle of the ring, he says, happy birthday. You know, so, yeah, I got, man, tons of stories and, you know, just – it just kind of blows my mind. Snoop Dogg got this thriller show, all right? It's, a, it's my newest one, and it's something that kind of brought a lot of smiles to my face, and I've explained it. Uh, I'm working with those two uh, rappers, right, before the show even starts. And uh, after the fight, uh, the exhibition, the, he comes into the ring and, oh, Stitch, you're a legend, man. You're a legend, you know? And we hug and all that. And, but as we're walking down the stairs, uh, down to the floor, he's behind me, and he said, oh, gee can I take a picture with you? And I keep walking because I didn't know he was talking about me. And sure enough, he wanted to take a picture with me. So to me, that was, that was kind of, but that made it, uh, you know, Charlie, that made it to the point where, you know, outside of the MMA or the combat fans, people outside of that, my industry know me. And that's, you know, that's really the icing on the cake. So, yeah. But if you got questions for other stories, uh, throw them out, man. I want, I want you to speak to me about um, the movies. So working in the movies, that's something that, you know, you say that you were um, rapping Michael B. Jordan's hands sort of every day. Um, in the whole filming process for these films, obviously it's not an actual fight. So can you sort of, when they're doing these scenes kind of thing, um, and, and he, I've seen clips before where he says he had to sort of like perfect his boxing and stuff like that. Um, how exactly so does it all sort of come together? It's almost like a dance routine. It's got to be choreographed, all of that kind of thing. I've seen the thing, you know, it is quite real where he takes that punch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. what is the whole process of, like you say, you know, you're wrapping his hands every, every single day. What, what does he sort of have to do? And then sort of how does it come to life in the actual film as we see it? Yeah, well, that's a good question. But the, the script is already written, mm. right? And, and, and months and months before they even start filming, uh, they start working together. The fighters start working together and, and they have a stunt man that choreographs the techniques. So they work on, okay, this, during this period, this round, this period, these are the techniques we're gonna do, or here's the comment you're gonna make. So they practice it, break practice it. And then during the breaks, during the filming, then the, uh, the stunt guy will go over those techniques again. So, you know, they'll film them and, and you know, each clip is, you know, when they're filming, it's less than a minute that they're doing it. So they, they run that same technique till they get it right. And then they'll go into the next project. What was that first call like getting asked to sort of, I mean, Stitch Duran, greatest cutman of combat sports, and then almost a movie star as well. That's something that, that you can say. That's that definitely like a bucket list sort of thing. Um, how did that even come about? Obviously, I imagine they said, look, we're doing this is you know this is the way I see it, and it's sort of common sense, really. Look, we're doing a boxing film. Um, you know, who better to have in the corner for these sort of scenes than Stitch himself? But sort of that call, I don't know if you remember it or sort of how it came about. Can you sort of talk about that, perhaps? 
Yeah, of course, you know, and, and I've done like seven, I think eight movies and, and it's just been, and I've never asked for one job, Charlie. That's what kind of blows me away. And, and like I mentioned with Houston and Alexander, I'm not an actor. I, I'm far from being an actor, but I could play myself pretty easy. Uh, but Ryan Coogler, I guess through Andre Ward, because Ryan Coogler was from Oakland. And before I moved to Las Vegas, I lived in Oakland. And Andre Ward was working with Ryan Coogler, the writer, director. And uh, he's the one that suggested to get me. And when I got the call, uh, yeah, I was super excited, right? Uh, I get the script and, and I'm looking and my name is Marcel in the script. And I'm like, oh, no, you know, I don't know anybody named Marcel. I'm going to have to figure out how they could use my name. But as it goes, when it was time for Rocky to introduce the team to Adonis in the beginning of the movie, Sylvester Stallone says, and the line should have been, this is Marcel, the best cut man in Las Vegas. Well, Sylvester Stallone says, this is Stitch, the best cut man in Philadelphia. And bro, I'm like you, I got my heart just started thumping because that was so, so nice of him and he didn't have to do that. Well, the next day, I, I thanked him for that. He says, no, it, it has to be authentic, you know, and even with Brian Coogler, you know, we're out to dinner and uh, he's with his family and all that. And we're talking and, and I said, look, Ryan, I let you know right now that if I see something that's not right, I'm going to bring it up to your attention. And he says, Stitch, please do, please do. That's why we brought you in, you know, uh, but just like Triller, they, now it's, well, the experience is one thing. Of course, I've earned those, but it's also this face. I got I got a message yesterday. I wish I could dig it up. And the guy says, uh, a Stitch, you you are everywhere. You know, do you do time travel? You do all the greatest fights. And do you do time time travel? Or are you a, a vampire? You know, but I see you in every every major event. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to have seen that kind of statement. But, yeah, things just happen, man. You know, you're talking about movies. So in July, uh, I'll be up in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, for like, I think three months, uh, being a consultant for a MMA movie. And, uh, and I'm sure I'll be getting some roles in that also, but more as a consultant. Uh, and then I'm waiting for Creed three, you know, Michael B. Jordan. And there's another oh, thing. Well. Yeah. So, so here's another behind the scenes story is, as, as I'm telling Michael, how, uh, as I'm wrapping his hands, how I'm so proud of him. You know, when, when I wrap fighters hands, uh, even Michael, I like to talk to him to relax them, get them out of that fight mentality, just yeah. relax them. So I do the same with Michael B. Jordan. I just, you know, we just talk. But I told him how proud I was of him and, and Ryan Coogler and Tessa and, and Steve Kappel, the director. And he looks at me like this and he says, Stitch, we went from being actors to writers, producers, and directors. And he tells me this like three years ago. He says, I'm directing Creed Three, and you're with me as long as you want. You know, and I thought that was such an admirable part on on him you know so but it makes sense because i i'm like the mick of the creed guy now you know what mick was to rocky i am to uh, adonis and then uh, i'll throw you another quick story out uh, about uh, if you remember during the scenes when um, rocky is doing pad we leave uh, the the team the the trainers and myself leave and you know i yell out you can't hear too much i said rocky you know take care of him he's still a little pup you know yeah, so he's doing the pads and then he throws up, if you remember that scene. And then Michael B. Jordan picks him up and, and he's carrying him. And all of a sudden, Michael B. Jordan yells, Stitch! And the gym where we filmed is upstairs in the second floor. But it's snowing outside in Philadelphia, so we're on the stairs going up to the second floor. We don't know what's going on, but I hear Stitch. And the first thing I do is I may start making a move up. But then I thought maybe that's part of the role. Mm -hmm. And and that wasn't in the script. That was ad libbed, right? But the next day, as I'm rapping Michael, I said, "Look, I I'm not one to kiss nobody's ass or anything like that." I said, "But that scene right there really got my juices flowing, and I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, because I'm there to take care of you as your cut man, and we had just left, and then Rocky goes through this scenario where you got to take care of him, and the first thing that pops into your head is me." So you call for me. I said, that, that's a very, very strong statement. That's part of the movie. It's um, almost, from speaking to you, it's almost like, um, yeah, I'm almost like lost for words here, sat here, because it's like everything that I can sort of speak about, every name that I can mention, 
sort of anything you've been there and done it do you ever sort of like I mean you're still you're still very much present in the game and like you say you've seen it all in the sport now that you sort of like to work with the characters and the same I imagine in the movies you know you wouldn't do it if it wasn't for the experiences and you know the people that you were um that you were like joined with is there any point where you sort of pinch yourself almost and just sort of think because I mean you're living any fighting fan's dream and that's, yes. that's hard work to get you there don't get me wrong I'm not sort of saying oh you know lucky you kind of thing but you know what you're living is is the dream for me being around all those fighters that's something that I'm, I'm I can only dream of and hope that I'm going to get to that point do you ever sort of pinch yourself and and, and that's almost how I feel about speaking to you like the, the first time I got this interview and you know like I say I was speaking to my friends and uh, I've got a, I've, my friend who's an interviewer, his brother, uh, he's a few, year, a few years younger than me, but he really likes his MMA. And, you know, he, he was like, wow, Charlie, you've interviewed Stitch. And he listened to it and he messaged me and he was like, it was, it was amazing. And I've got other friends who are sort of, I find that I've almost got more friends that are into the MMA and they all know your name and they're, you know, they all speak about it. And, and that's how I, you know, feel, you know, even speaking to you. So, You've got all of these moments, you know, with film stars, with uh, with directors, with, um, you know, CEOs of companies, you know, top guys at top rank, you know, um, fighters. Is there any moment where you sort of like, like I say, pinch yourself and you think just for one second, wow, what a journey that I'm on, you know, and, yeah. and taking part of? Uh, all the time. It, it, it blows my mind, bro. And I... Uh... You know, and, and the reason why is uh, it's where I grew up, how I grew up, is I grew up as a farm worker, right? So uh, very humbled, and I'm, I'm really the same guy uh, that I was growing up. But, you know, growing to where I started from to where I'm at, it just continues to blow my mind. And during the, uh, the first creep, you know, I tell Sylvester Stallone, I said, man, I just can't sleep at nights. And he goes, well, what's wrong? He goes, you know, I'm, I'm here in Philadelphia for six weeks with you and Michael B. Jordan and Tessa and Ryan Coogler. And, and he says, hey, he goes, you earned it. And, you know, when he said that, it resonated on me. I said, yeah, you know what? I earned my stripes to get in the position that I'm at. But, you know, what, what beyond that, it, what makes these stories so special is the inner lock that we have with each other, the fighters, the coaches. You're talking about the, you know, uh, all these people. There's those the stories that you can't get because you're not me. You know, I'm there for one specific yeah. reason, and that's to take care of the fighters, and they understand that. And, and you know, uh, yeah, it, it blows my mind how many times these gallant men will give me a hug and tell me they love me, give me a kiss in the cheek. You know, so uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, when we were there for the UFC the first time, uh, one of the, the, uh, the guys from the royal family wanted to take a picture with Anderson Silva, and then and, uh, and he did, you know. And I got to meet him, took a picture with him, and I didn't know the status of, of the royalty family there, and, but he was pretty good, you know. And so anyway, come fight time, he's sitting right behind me. And uh, so I said, you know, what I like to do is every time I do a show, uh, MMA show, you know, fans are always in the lobby, right? And they're hanging out before or after, you know. Uh, but I always pick one fan, and I'll sit them down, and I'll wrap their hands like a fighter. And then what I'll do is I'll cut it off, take it off and then tape it together so they get to keep their own rap, right? Well, this guy from the royal family, Mohammed, I said, you know what? I have to go in the back. I got to rap Anderson Silva, Hoist Gracie. Hoist Gracie, that's a legend over there. Uh, and I think BJ Penn. Uh, so I said, come on, man, so you can see what we do. So I like to give these guys, you know, it's, it's a look, if I ever get a chance to meet you and see you in person, I'd like to take you to the back so you can see what we do and you'll get a whole different perspective. So I'm rapping Anderson Silva, and I said, Anderson, gentleman, Muhammad wants to take a picture with you. Yes, please, no problem, no problem. So I finished rapping his hands, so I tell Muhammad, you know what, sit down. I started rapping his hands. And he got so excited, bro. I've done it for Native American chiefs. I've done it, you know, uh, generals in the military, and it changes their whole personality because it, it gets them that close into being a fighter and they get to understand that these, what these guys go through. So I wrapped his hands, I wrapped his buddy's hands, and, and uh, he says, you know, Stitch, this came from your heart. I know it did. You didn't have to do this, but it means so much to me that you 
went beyond what you would normally do to do that. He goes, he gives me his card. He says, look, if you ever want to bring your family over here for vacation, you let me know, you wow. know? And yeah. So moments like that, bro, I'm telling you. I it's, uh, was just listening to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't told that story too often either, but yeah. And then I saw him the second time we went to Dubai and as a matter of fact, that first night he, he, he invited me to one of their parties and uh, you know, everybody had their outfits on and all that, but come party, uh, come the party, everybody took them off. And, but he told the guys, whatever he wants, he gets, you know, and, and I'm, I'm a humble guy. I, you know, it, those moments are great, but I'm not one to take advantage of them. In terms of, um, and you will understand this more than anyone, uh, when I speak to sort of my friend, I don't, I don't, similar to yourself, I don't really like to talk about what I do too much when I'm out because I don't want it to be like the whole, oh, look at me yeah. kind of thing. But, um, you know, if, if, I've, if I'm sort of, if I've done something that I'm quite proud of and I'll, and I'll mention it or they ask me a question about it, I, the question I get a lot, um, and, and I'm only 17, so I'm still in college, I'm, I'm sort of the last year before done with education for good and I'll be looking to go full time in the media industry, whatever I decide to do. But as you can imagine, sort of all, all my friends are sort of aged 18 to sort of 22, perhaps. And I get the question so much like, uh, what what are these celebs as per se like because i mean through doing this i've i've spoke to people i mean you know names you you would have you know dealt with much bigger names but for example like reality tv stars over here that have got interested in boxing uh you know i'll mm. do interviews with them and you, there'll be girls who are like oh i love them i love them you know what's it like actually speaking to them and and you know another one with shannon briggs for example i get on i'm quite lucky to he doesn't really do sort of much media stuff in terms of interviews but he's sort of warm to me um and you know he's got that crazy personality that's quite fun and it's you know it's fun for me to be able to interview and people say to me they're like what are they like and you sort of realize how you know just because they've got the fame and, and the wealth and all of this how grounded these sort of people are were you obviously you would have known that through the boxing but like you say when you meet um you know members of royal families in certain countries um sylvester stallone michael b jordan do you hold the same imp uh, expectation on them as you do with boxers as I'm going to meet them and they're going to be, you know, the same as, or do you still find yourself surprised at sort of how kind and nice everyone is? And, and I know that sounds mad, but there is this view that they're a celebrity. It's almost like they're a different person, but they're not, they're humans too kind of thing. Uh, yeah. and, and like me speaking to you, for example, I mean, you're a celebrity, let's face it. Um, as mad as that must be to hear, but me speaking to you is, you know, just sort of two friends speaking, as per se. It's normal. It's a normal right. conversation. Do you, when, like I say, when you meet those royal family members, when the film stars, all of that, do you hold the same impression as they're just normal? Or are you even in your, yourself a little bit in awe? Like, what are they going to be like? Yeah, both of, both of the above. You know, uh, the, the thing about it is, uh, you know, a lot of these, these guys, like, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, I think I just lost you, bro. Hold on. That's all good. Uh, uh, hold on. Oh, here we go. Sorry, man. That's okay. Are you there? I can't see your face. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out how to do this properly. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. No, I'm not real good at this shit, so so bear with me. All That's right. Okay, I think no. we're good. There we are. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's different because they come into my world. And, and what I do uh these guys come into my world uh but so they kind of look at me like snoop dogg was mm. a good example you know uh he came into my world and he's the one that's acknowledging me and and uh but yeah it, it's it's quite humbling and it's quite uh uh i mean i don't know what to say you know i i know i was at at, at the mgm here in las vegas doing a ufc one time and i'm in the back uh area and this one superstar baseball player uh you know, I go and say hi to him. He just kind of shines me on. I said, nah, 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 nah. I said, here we shake hands. I made him shake my hand, you know, and, uh, you know, acknowledge me, you know, don't be, you know, don't be one of these jerks. But the guys that I've worked with have all been tremendous. And I've worked with a lot of, you know, Woody Harrelson and Antonio Banderas. I met, you know, George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, uh, Julia Roberts, Andy Garcia and Ocean's Eleven and Kevin James, Henry Winkler, 
you know, I've met all these people and, and uh, it just, it, it's fun to say, to me, it's like a notch. You know, I've, I've accomplished this, I've accomplished that. And that's it. It's never, never been about the money. Uh, it's never been about the fame. It's just the same. I'm that little kid that was a farm worker that now is hanging out with these big guys, you know. And uh, to me, I'm quite honored to, uh, to be in that position. And, you know, people, I hear the word legend all the time, and it just kind of, you know, kind of, a, kind of a embarrasses me a little it's bit. True. Yeah. It is true though. That's, that's you are like you know you search. I think I searched when, when I first did the interview. I, the, the the original one that we did. I, start, I searched up your name and you see the you see the words like legend and the great. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's 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 mad. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You know, it's it's, it's crazy how how that was created. You know, uh, but I, I mean, listen, I I re- and that's why I always return phone calls. I always return messages uh, because. I'm not that guy. I'm just a guy like you, you know, and, and I want people to look at me as being one of you guys, you know, uh, very, very simple. And, you know, people say, oh, man, you know, Stitch, you know, you, you know, you're a great guy. You've never changed. I said, no, you know, I liked myself when I was young. Why would I change? You know, if it worked, then it works now. Perfect. One thing I'll quickly say, and, I, and I'll ask you a few uh, things when I sort of round up the interview and stop recording. I won't take up too much of your time. But sure. one thing that I will say on camera is, uh, you know, once this is all done, I'm looking at sort of going into media full time. So undoubtedly, whether it's, you know, a fight over here or I'm abroad and I get my big shot uh, at a show and you're working out, I'll take you up on that offer with the hand wrap uh, and I'll take that home and I'll have that sort of up. Uh, I've got I've, yeah. got I've got framed signed Anthony Joshua gloves. I still haven't even put those up, but that will be the that 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 hand wrap will be the first thing, and that will go straight up on the wall. So that will be something that I can sort of say, look, and, and I will hold you to it. Uh, no, of course it's easy for me to do, and and you know it's fun how it, it changes those personalities. And you know another quick story is uh, I always do military tours, support the troops, and I've been to Afghanistan and you know a lot of the bases here and. Uh, but I did, I wrapped a three-star general and a three-star general in combat is pretty real high. And he got so excited that he sent me an eight by 10 and he autographed it for me, you know? And, uh, so I'm thinking, you know, God, I was, I was in the military too, but I was not definitely even close to speaking to, to generals uh, the way he spoke to me. So uh, that was, yeah, I changed people's minds. That's for sure. Stitch, thank you very much. What an episode. I can't wait to hear it back. Uh, like I say, I'll, end the recording here but i'll ask you a few more things uh any any other final message no that's it you know outside of you know staying busy and being on the road so uh thanks for having me on charlie i tell you man you're gonna uh, you're gonna succeed and just keep doing what you're doing and you know i think we mentioned before you know is is we all come to that one line where we don't want to cross or we're scared to cross it uh but i always say and i think i told you last time if you don't cross it you'll never get there so uh you know, and Houston Alexander asked me last night, and I'll add that to you. He says, what, what gives you that drive to continue doing all this thing? And I said, well, you know, I kind of look at si- certain situations, and I look at it, and I say, well, you know what? Doing that's not going to kick my ass. I know it's not going to be able to kick my ass. So that's the mentality I put inside myself to keep going, to keep going forward. But, you know, I tell all your listeners, cross that line, man. And, and if you're scared, Welcome to the club because we've all been there and done that. But uh, to succeed, you got to do it. And then also number one is if you do it for the money, you do it for the wrong reasons. You'll never enjoy your job. Thank you, Stitch. You're a legend. Yes, sir. And, and I hope everyone listening to this enjoyed it as much as I did speaking firsthand. And I think Stitch did as well. Yeah, it's fun. Well, you know, it's fun talking and, and just uh, kind of chatting with you, you know. And I, I like to call it barbershop talk. You know, where nothing is scripted and, you know, and, and you, get to, you get to ask questions and I get to tell you stories, you know. So I had mentioned before that, you know, I want a lot of success to come your way. And, uh, you know, we can definitely do it again. Top man. Thank you.